Enzymes are utilized in many biological processes to speed up a reaction by reducing the activation energy of a process. Now remember that there is spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions. It's important to understand that just because a reaction is spontaneous, that does not mean it's going to occur 100% we still need to reach our activation energy in order for a spontaneous reaction to occur. Spontaneous just simply refers to that the reaction is more likely to happen compared to a non-spontaneous reaction, which is most likely endothermic. Now, if we take a look at our graph and our depiction of what happens when there is no enzyme, essentially we have our substrate and we need to get to the product but we must reach that transition state, that, that energy state that we need to get to our products. Now, the energy difference between our free substrate and that transition state energy, that change is referred to as delta, which is change, delta G. So our free energy difference of an uncatalyzed reaction because there's no enzyme present here so this is an uncatalyzed reaction and we can actually see that we require a lot of energy in order for this reaction to occur and since it requires so much energy this reaction isn't likely to occur on its own it needs help from an enzyme now if we take a look when we have an enzyme, there are two different possibilities. We know that the substrate is going to bind to the active site of an enzyme. That active site can either be complementary to the substrate or it can be complementary to the transition state. And we'll take a look at that in a second. But if we look over here and we can see this magnet, this is our substrate and we have this enzyme and we can see how that substrate fits perfectly into our enzyme okay so this means that the active site of this enzyme is complementary it is the same as the substrate so the substrate is able to bind and now we can imagine that if the active site is complementary this is going to form a very stable interaction between the two. They're going to like each other, essentially. They're going to like each other because they're similar. So this is actually, since it creates more of a stable system, this is actually going to reduce their free energy because they're more stable. Remember that when something is unstable, it has high energy. But if something is stable, it has low energy. So we see over here that we had our substrate originally, but that substrate bound with the enzyme it now has a lower energy and our activation energy is still up here. So we've, we've actually increased our delta G. Now we need even more energy than we originally needed. So we can see over here that this is our delta G uncatalyzed, which we saw previously, but now this is our entirety of delta G catalyzed. Now, now we may think, what is the point of an enzyme if it's increasing our delta G? Well, this is because it is more efficient for an enzyme to actually be complementary to the transition state instead of the substrate. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. What I want to make note of over here is this little bump now what is this little bump that is occurring between the substrate and the enzyme substrate complex so essentially there is a small amount of energy needed for the enzyme and substrate to bind to each other but once they do bind to each other there is an energy released and we'll talk about that as well, but there is an energy release and that energy release is able to drive this process forward. Now, if we take a look over here, we have the enzyme active site complementary to transition state. Now, what does this mean? So if we take a look at our enzyme, we can see that our substrate does not bind perfectly in there. 
but once it distorts, now this substrate is able to bind to the enzyme. So what's happening? The enzyme is actually kind of forcing the substrate to change its shape, to distort in order to fit inside. And this distortion is actually favorable. It releases energy. So that release of energy that we see in this example is referred to as our binding energy. So on the surface of the enzyme uh, and this surface of the substrate, we form, some, uh, we form a lot of weak non-covalent interactions. Now, when the substrate has to distort, it is now more like its transition state. So we have reached the transition state. So this diagram over here, it depicts what it looks like at the transition state over here. And that release of energy that we see uh, because of this distortion, it's used to push the reaction forward. Because if we take a look over here, we can see that our substrate and our enzyme uh, substrate complex, they have almost the same amount of energy. And we might ask, why do they have the same amount of energy if this is considered more favorable? Well, we have to understand that the reaction is moving forward. Even though we end up at the same amount of free energy, the reaction has moved significantly forward, and now we're more likely to reach that transition state. And it's moved forward because of that binding energy. Now, when that binding energy is released, we know, first of all, it's used for that distortion. It's, it also... Um, so we have essentially various processes that are occurring within this mechanism that are unfavorable. For example, we know that enzymes are able to align two molecules together to create uh, a more favorable interaction because if two molecules are aligned and facing each other, they will better interact. And that requires energy. So that binding energy is used for alignment. Now this enzyme, it also has to uh, change its conformation to fit the substrate. We call that induced fit. So induced fit, that also requires energy. So the binding energy is used for the um, induced fit process of the enzyme and substrate. The binding energy is also used for uh, desolvation. And desolvation is essentially our substrate. It is in an aqueous environment and we need to separate those water molecules that are surrounding our substrate in order for the enzyme to bind to the substrate. So the removal of water molecules, that, is, that requires energy. And our binding energy that is released in this process is used for that as well. Now our entropy also decreases, and we can understand why our entropy decreases because we know that when the substrate binds to the enzyme, it is more, that's more ordered. If the substrate is free floating, then that's more randomness. But once it binds, uh, that's more order and our entropy decreases, and that's also unfavorable. So the binding energy, once again, is used for the entropy. So we had four things. We had a decrease in entropy. We had desolvation, induced fit. And our fourth one was alignment. And our binding energy is used for all four of these unfavorable reactions. And since all of this is done through the binding energy, our, our substrate has changed a lot. So it's moved along the reaction coordinate and now it's more likely to reach that transition state and then we get our products. So what we can understand is that when we use an enzyme, it is better for the enzyme's active site to be complementary to the transition state because that forces the substrate to distort. And that distortion releases that binding energy, which can be used for these various unfavorable processes. And it also moves the reaction forward and reduces the activation energy required because of that binding energy. Now we can note that our delta G uh, for our catalyzed reaction has decreased.
and this reaction is now more likely to occur.